You'd think when the next election result is as clear-cut as it appears to be that there wouldn't be so much need for honey traps and fishing expeditions, uh, fishing with a PH. But no, there seems to be a wealth of entrapment attempts around Westminster with apparently a senior Labour MP, a senior and a cabinet minister, a Conservative MP, journalists and others falling foul of these uh, people like Charlotte who send explicit photographs and messages suggesting that she knows the politician well and then one or two of the politicians seem to have fallen victim for this and reciprocated with photographs of their own in response, which of course is completely compromising. Now, uh, Alicia Kearns says that this is straight out of the Russian Soviet playbook, uh, the honey trap thing, and that this is evidence of a foreign state interfering in our politics. I think it's more a matter of the naivety and stupidity of our politicians and the fact that they are, are clearly not in control of their own lives. And, you know, they, people who, <laughs> who are not exactly careful or who are not exactly prudent are open to compromising experiences and blackmail. And do we really want to have politicians of that nature prowling around Westminster, lording it over us and telling us how best to behave if they aren't capable of behaving in a sound and clear way in their own in their own right. I think the issue of cybersecurity is an important one. And and I think the the, the possibility of there being campaigns orchestrated by foreign powers is certainly credible. But equally, you have to ask Cui Bono. And who benefits from this? Well, there is the argument that a foreign power benefits from chaos in Westminster. But I think it's more likely that this is a national prank and simply the desire for individuals and the and social media to feel important and at the same time to recognize that MPs are slipping below that threshold of importance. When you look at the possible no, the, the, the polls for the next election. Among Leave voters, there is a marginal a favouring of the Conservative vote. And if you put the Conservative vote together with the Reform vote, it's a, it's a done deal. The over-65s are in much the same position. There's a movement towards the South, which again favours... The, the Conservative and Reform over Labour. But as you move beyond those areas, beyond those demographic groups, there is nothing to salvage a Conservative win. Nothing at all. And particularly among the 18 to 24-year-olds, the I, I think 14% of 18 to 24-year-olds who were polled recently said they would vote Conservative. 6% voting Reform and 59% voting for Labour. Interestingly, 9% voting for the Green Party, I think the largest percentage in the population. Whereas among Leave voters, it's 3% voting for the Greens, 30% voting for Labour. Uh, as, you, as you move into the North, 53% voting for Labour, 23% voting for Conservative and 12% voting for reform. So in the North, that, that reform edge 
is not as strident as in, for example, blue collar among blue collar workers, among Leave voters, uh, and uh, and among fifty five to sixty four year olds, where it's quite high, and over sixty five. In, in fact, the older you get, the more inclined people seem to be to want to vote with Richard Tice and to want to support Nigel Farage. I, I, I ought to be suggesting hashtag give Nigel a hug. Well, happy birthday, Nigel. I mean, I, I, I think that's the least we could do. But uh, I think um, I think we need to clean up our politics. And part of that is to be honest and recognize that we're going for a major political change. It may not be uh, as decisive as the pollsters suggest. I think we're going to end up with a minor, uh, a, 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 a minor Labour victory. Because uh, let's face the fact, they're going to have to gain uh, 90, 90, 100 seats simply to gain power. And the last election, I think 90 seats changed hands. That was it. And that gave the Conservatives the extraordinary victory that Boris Johnson was so proud of. All the next election is likely to do is reverse that, and that's not going to give Labour a sizable working majority. It's going to give it a modest working majority, if at all. It might well end up with a hung parliament, in which case the decisive issues will be the friends of either the Labour Party or the Conservative Party, and as a wag pointed out the other day, the Conservatives have no friends.